Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. Thanks for tuning in. Ham Talk Live will be on the air shortly. Please stand by. This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. It's Ham Radio. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's Ham Talk Live, episode number 86, getting started with satellites. With KX9X recorded live on Thursday, October 19th, 2017. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live tonight, if we can get a microphone to work. Uh, we're joined by Sean Kutzko, KX9X. And uh, we'll take your calls live in just a few minutes. And last week on the show, Ken Goodwin, K5RG, was here to talk about the 50th anniversary of the NASA Johnson Space Flight Center Amateur Radio Club and their special event station. If you missed the show, you can listen anytime at hamtalklive.com or on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeart Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Hey, get your questions ready to go about satellites. And after uh, we talk to Sean for a while, you can call us uh, via telephone at 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812-638-4261. And I'll let you know when it's time to do that. Or you can Skype us at uh, Ham Talk Live. And uh, you can also tweet us at Ham Talk Live on Twitter. Uh, so make sure you uh, you do that and participate. We'd love to hear from you tonight. And we're on the air every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time right here on HamTalkLive.com. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, and my apologies, I have no idea what in the world happened here. As soon as we uh, started to uh, go to air, uh, the my microphone had no audio at all, so um, I'm just using the laptop mic tonight, so I'm not sure uh, how good this is going to sound, but we're going to get the information to you anyway, so uh, uh, hopefully uh, you uh, were able to stick around for a couple of minutes and uh, and get with us here. Well, uh, Sean Kutzko, KX9X, uh, is back with us. He's the former contest manager and public uh, relations manager at ARRL. Um, Sean enjoys portable operations, satellites, and QRP. He's an avid DXer and has had a chance to be the DX several times. Uh, he's been licensed since 1982 and is originally from central Illinois and uh, attended the nearby University of Illinois. And after being on staff at ARRL for 10 years, he's now a public relations and communications consultant and doing something he also enjoys, which is baking. And uh, he's also the drummer in the world famous Spurious Emissions Band, as heard here on Ham Talk Live. So, Sean, thank you for putting up with all the technical problems tonight, and welcome back once again. Hey, it wouldn't be radio without a couple of electronic weasels once in a while, right? Oh, I guess. This is a new <laughs> one. I'm used to Skype hey, giving know. me trouble, but I'm not used to a microphone giving me trouble. I, I, I still don't know what's going on. Drivers? or, See, or I don't know. Well, we can always... We can always switch the show to CW or FT8, and we'll do okay. There you, there you go. Although I'm not sure how <laughs> how much information we're going to get on FT8. <laughs> we're going to have to make a lot of QSOs and get all that in on FT8. But, oh, my goodness. Well, all right. We, we're, we're already late. So, 
uh, let's let's get talking about some satellites. Uh, I wanted you to, to come on and talk a little bit about getting started with satellites and how to how to get into that and what kind of stuff you need. Um, and I've already had somebody ask me, uh, hey, can you ask Sean about the the aero antenna? So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about some equipment um, for working satellites? Okay, well, gladly. Um, so before I even do that, I'd like to, to make a kind of a sales pitch as to why you should get active with satellite operating in the first place. And there are a lot of really, really great reasons for it. Number one, it's, ex it's an extremely accessible portion of the amateur radio hobby. Uh, technician class licensees have access to the vast majority of uh, the satellites that are uh, uh, out there. Uh, satellite passes are also 100% predictable. You can you know when a satellite is going to be above the horizon uh, weeks in advance. It's not dependent on uh, good propagation from uh, the ionosphere in order to uh, make contacts via satellite. You got a lot of opportunity to get at, to get on the satellites. There are uh, 14 uh, sideband and CW satellites. There's uh, two FM satellites. Uh, there's three satellites that allow digital modes to be uh, 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 used through them. And in addition to that, we just had two Chinese satellites had their uh, uh, their uh, linear their their sideband and CW capabilities turned on earlier this week, and we're about three weeks away from uh, another FM satellite, the Fox One B satellite, which is a big AMSAT project. And um, we'll get to AMSAT in a little bit, and that's going to be on uh, uh, launched up round. Uh, it's currently scheduled for November 10th, so uh, there could be uh, as many as 15 satellites that uh, uh, technician class licensees and up have access to in just. Uh, less than a month. Uh, the gear is extremely portable. You can set up a big satellite station at home if you want, but you can also get by with uh, much smaller uh, amounts of equipment in order to make it work. And it's so much fun. Uh, it's a, if, if you're interested in uh, technical challenges, uh, you have access to those kinds of things. It's an extremely enjoyable collecting um, maidenhead grid squares. And if you're not familiar with a grid square, we'll get to talking about those in a little bit as well. There's a huge community of helpful people that are willing to to, uh, help you learn about getting on satellites. Uh, the AMSAT, the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation, uh, and all of its members, uh, they have a ton of experience on getting uh, people interested in operating satellites and helping get them started. So... I would encourage anybody who is looking for a new challenge or wants to do uh, something new in the hobby to definitely check out satellites. Um, so how's that for a sales pitch? That's a, that's a great sales pitch. Sounds like it's coming <laughs> from a, a PR guy. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so your, your initial question before all of that long sales pitch was, uh, what kind of equipment do you need to get started with, a, with uh, amateur radio satellites? Um, you, can, uh, you can get started uh, using the amateur radio satellites with a dual band handheld uh, HD and uh, a small uh, portable Yagi uh, on two meters and seventy centimeters. You can uh, uh, you can uh, you can get started with just that little equipment. Um, it's there are certainly some uh, some nice bells and whistles that better equipment will give you, uh, including um, the ability to uh, transmit and and receive simultaneously, which becomes very very important when you uh, go from the FM satellites to the sideband and CW satellites. But you can get started uh, just using um, a simple dual band handheld uh, HT and a small Yagi that you uh, point at the satellite as it flies overhead. So that's you know you can get started for seventy five dollars worth of gear. All right, very good, and maybe even. Maybe even one of those bow fangs. Did somebody uh, say UV5R should be just did, did, fine. did somebody uh, say yeah, bow fang? Yeah, it's, it's... <laughs> no, anytime somebody says bow fang, we have to play the the clip. You got to play the thing. The 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 song. So right, I get just it. had to get that in there. Um, the uh, you you know um, a bow fang is certainly not the the best radio to use for uh, for some of this stuff, but it will certainly get you by. There are, there have been plenty of operators that have made lots of satellite QSOs using a bow fang. So if that's what you got, you can use it. All right. So how do you find out? Well, now I'm going to, I'm going to switch these up here for a minute. Sure. Let's talk about Doppler shift for a second. 
Let, let's talk about that because because the Doppler shift is is something that equipment can definitely help out on. So so talk to us about Doppler shift and uh, how you can solve some of those issues. Okay, so everybody knows about the Doppler effect uh, from from grade school or junior high. With uh, you know you're standing in one place and the train goes by, and as the train whistle is blowing as it goes by, the frequency decreases. It goes down in pitch. So uh, because a satellite is a moving target, it's flying overhead through the sky, uh, the receive frequency uh, or, well, let me clarify that. The, the, the frequencies that, uh, that are used on satellites are affected by the fact that this satellite is hurtling through space as it flies overhead. And as, uh, as the satellite passes overhead, you have to adjust your, uh, in some cases, your receive frequency, and in some cases, your transmit frequency in order to keep uh, on track with uh, being able to communicate through the satellite. The way the satellites work uh, is uh, it's, uh, you, you transmit on one frequency and you receive on a, a different frequency. Uh, band. So most of the satellites uh, in orbit now, you transmit on uh, two meters or 70 centimeters, and uh, you receive on the opposite band. So if you if you transmit up to the satellite on two meters, you listen to the satellite on 70 centimeters. And in some cases, uh, that's backwards. You would transmit on 70 centimeters and listen on two meters. Uh, it changes from satellite to satellite. Each satellite uh, is different. Um, so as the satellite is passing overhead, uh, the, the, the frequencies will shift and Doppler affects higher frequencies more. So the Doppler effect is more pronounced on 70 centimeters than it is on two meters. What that means for an FM satellite user is if you are listening to the satellite uh, on 70 centimeters, you need to adjust your receive frequency as the satellite passes overhead. If you're transmitting on 70 centimeters, you need to adjust your transmit frequency as the satellite goes overhead. So uh, if, if, you, uh, if you don't adjust that frequency, you will either not be able to hear the satellite terribly well, or people will not be able to hear you terribly well, because you're not perfect, you're not in sync with the satellite's uh, um, um, receiver uh, as it passes overhead, so uh, that becomes very, very important, and that can be a little daunting for uh, for new satellite operators. But it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, a little practice using um, a directional antenna and uh, your radio's receiver, you can start getting uh, you can start getting very good at uh, at being able to track the Doppler shift as the satellite passes overhead. All right, so this, so some radios will have you know that capability of, of kind of doing that automatically and and so it's a little easier that way if you if you well, have the, that there are there are some uh, there are some software programs that will uh, automatically compensate for Doppler for you if you have uh, if you have a, a, a computer interface to your radio. There are some there are a couple of software packages that will automatically compensate for Doppler for you, but that's not an exact science. Sometimes it's off just a little bit, so you may still need to do some adjustments with your VFO as the satellite's passing overhead. Um, for uh, for portable operators, uh, somebody who uses an HT or a small uh, all ban all mode uh, uh, radio like the uh, Yaesu eight seventeen or an ICOM seven thousand or something like that, um, uh, you don't necessarily have to have a software program to compensate for Doppler. You can do it manually. It's just it's another uh, radio skill that goes in your toolbox. That's all. Okay, very good. All right, well, let's talk about how to find those uh, birds and, and how to get uh, everything pointed in the right direction to, to make all that work. What, what are some strategies for that? Well, okay, so if you've got uh, 14 or 15 different satellites that are in orbit, each one of those satellites passes over uh, your location, I'm going to say... Um, the United States, uh, just because that's where I'm, I'm centered. I'm up here in, uh, in Connecticut, uh, in uh, Grid Square Fox Nancy 31. So uh, each of those satellites will pass, uh, generally, they will pass overhead uh, around five or six times a day. And all of this is uh, completely predictable uh, using uh, one of three 
major methods. One is on the AMSAT website, which is www.amsat.org, A-M-S-A-T dot O-R-G, and they have a section in their, on their website of uh, satellite pass predictions. So you can go in there and you can uh, select the satellite that you want to track, type in your location, and it will show you all of the pass predictions uh, coming up in the, in the near future. Another uh, option is uh, there are several uh, apps for your smartphone that you can use to track the satellites. Um, I have an iPhone, so I'm familiar with iOS products, but they have uh, satellite tracker apps for iOS and Android devices. Uh, the one that I use and am most comfortable with is, a, is an app called GoSat Watch. It's not a free app, but it is an extremely high-quality app, and I find it to be worth the money to pay for it. And what that does is that uh, updates all of the orbital elements that, uh, that describes how the satellite is uh, going to be orbiting overhead, and it uh, condenses all of that information into your phone, and you can just uh, select uh, any number of satellites uh, to track, and it will uh, take the, your location from the phone's GPS, and it will automatically show you when a satellite is going to be overhead. Uh, the third option is a website, uh, n2yo.com. November to yankeeoscar.com and there you can type in the names of satellites or you can choose from a, a list and it will show you uh, in real time where a satellite is uh, is orbiting and you can uh, you can zoom in on specific areas of the world map and uh, and find where a satellite is going to be overhead so you've got a lot of options on how to get the information of what satellite is going to be overhead when so you know you need to have that information in order to be able to communicate through the satellite because satellites are only accessible when they are above uh, your horizon. So you need to know when the satellites are going to be above your horizon. All right. Very good. And then let's talk a little bit about a typical exchange on uh, a satellite QSO because uh, mm -hmm. you don't exactly have time to uh, to carry on a, a long rag to you and talk about your your garden and your ailments and your <laughs> weather. So uh, so tell us how you get that accomplished in, in brief periods of time so that uh, mm -hmm. you don't uh, get cut off by the pass. Right. Well, time is a very important factor when when communicating through the amateur radio satellites. The ham radio satellites are what they call low Earth orbit satellites or LEO satellites, and they're only a, a few hundred miles above the surface of the Earth. And under the best conditions, if you have a satellite that is uh, going right overhead, uh, you're only looking at a window of opportunity from from horizon to horizon of maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So you don't have a whole lot of time uh, to have uh, conversations on the satellite. Um, if there are a lot of people that are trying to access the satellite at any one point in time, you need to be able to share that resource. It's, it's, it's kind of like a shared resource, and everybody needs to make time for everybody else to use a satellite. So the exchanges on, the, on satellites are usually pretty short. Uh, it's, you exchange call signs, you exchange the maidenhead grid square that you're in, and uh, that's about it. If, the, if there aren't a whole lot of people using a satellite, then that kind of frees things up to have, uh, you know, some more casual conversations. Uh, you know, you'll, if, if you use satellites regularly, you'll start becoming familiar with who the regular operators are, and, you know, you can say hi to them and stuff like that. That's no problem. But uh, if, uh, if a satellite is uh, particularly crowded or there are a lot of people trying to get on uh, and, and, and communicate through the satellite, then keeping things really short and being able to share that resource is very important. Okay, very good. And uh, we've even got some, uh, some audio from some of your contacts yeah, and uh, would that would this be a good time to do that, or you want to sure hold so on to there, that? No, that's fine. Um, there there are two basic uh, different kinds of satellites. There are uh, FM satellites, which uh, are basically like an orbiting repeater. Uh, so one one station can access uh, an FM satellite at a time. So uh, if you've got a lot of different people that are trying to use a satellite. Uh, an FM satellite, you, you know, only one person can can communicate through a repeater at a time. Same thing with an FM satellite. So you need to be able to share that time. Uh, then there are uh, another kind of satellite uh, called uh, linear satellites, and those are satellites that use sideband and CW on them. And those have uh, those have a device on them called a transponder, which provides 
uh, real bandwidth, anywhere from 20 to 100 kilohertz worth of bandwidth. So on sideband and CW satellites, multiple people can have conversations going on at the same time, just as if you were tuning up and down on 20 meters, for example. So FM satellites, they're like an FM repeater. Sideband and CW satellites, it's like being on an HF band, and you can spread out, and multiple people can have a conversation. I've got re- recordings of... Um, two different uh, passes. One is an FM satellite uh, called SO50, and then I've got a recording of a linear satellite called uh, FO29. And uh, I think uh, I think you've got the FM uh, satellite yep. clip queued uh, up. I've got is it right correct? here. Okay, so this is... This Assuming is Murphy doesn't video. show up again. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's on Murphy. Uh, uh. So this is... This is uh, this is a recording of me operating uh, this past July when I was uh, back home in Illinois uh, on on the uh, the line uh, between two different grid squares in uh, central Illinois and one of those grid squares is kind of rare so I had a few people that were trying to get in touch with me so they could uh, talk to somebody in that grid square and and confirm that grid uh, uh, much like people confirm states and countries on HF. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go to the tape. Kilo X-ray nine X-ray portable nine Echo Mike five nine six nine grid line. Echo Alpha Echo five Papa Hotel Echo Mike five nine six nine grid line. We got gotcha. you. Seventy three. Kilo X-ray, 9 X-ray, portable 9, Echo Mike 5969, grid line. X-9X, portable 9, this is Kilo 5, November Delta, K5ND. K5ND, hey Jim, uh, Echo Mike 5969, grid line from the Prairie of Illinois. From the Prairie of Illinois to the flatlands of Texas, it's Echo Mike 1-2. Thanks, Sean, 7-3. 73, Jim, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, KX9X, portable 9. November 8, Hotel. N8 Hotel Mike. Hey, Paul. Echo Mike 5969. Grid line. Over. Okay, Q. Uh, Fox Mike 18. Thanks for the last one in the EM. N8 HF. Glad to give you the last one in the Echo Mike field, Paul. 73. QRZ. Echo. Okay, Kilo. KX9X stroke 9. W5RKN. Uh, Whiskey 5 Radio Kilo Mike. Uh, Echo, Echo Mike 5969. Grid line. Over. Romeo Kilo November. Romeo Kilo November, Echo Mike 5969, grid line, over. Echo 73, Echo Mike 10. Echo Mike 10, thanks. K3 Echo Mike 69. K3 Hotel. All right, so there you go. So there's uh, between EM59 and EM69 grid lines on SO50. That's correct. And that's just me using um, uh, Yesu. Uh, VX6 uh, dual band handheld and uh, a a dual band uh, Yagi antenna that works on 70 centimeters and two meters called an arrow antenna, and uh, so that's uh, that's just me. So yeah, very good. And, and Jim Wilson K5ND says, "Wow, nice recording." Yeah, Jim. Uh, Jim Wilson <laughs> is uh, he, he's a he's a heck of a good satellite operator, and I know that he's extremely active with the Boy Scouts of America. And with this weekend's upcoming um, uh, jamboree on the air, I know that there's going to be some uh, Boy Scout satellite activity this weekend as well. So you might want to, you know, if you're interested in uh, checking out satellites for the first time, this would be a good uh, good weekend to do it and get some scouts in the log as well. Yeah, so Jim made the show for a third time, so he <laughs> and didn't even know it. Guy. He's a popular guy. Okay, so now let's go to FO twenty nine. Let's go to to the uh, to the clip from that. So you want to okay, set that so, up? Yeah. So this is going to sound uh, very much like listening to. Uh, uh, to uh, any HF band, um, and what this is a recording of is this is uh, um, so so uh, uh, the satellites uh, you know D expeditions uh, can take satellite gear with them as well, and this is a recording of the 2015 Navasa D expedition K1N 
uh, in February of 2015, uh, working the FO-29 sideband and CW satellite. And they are using uh, another one of those handheld Yagi antennas called the Arrow, uh, which is uh, a, a dual band handheld Yagi. And all they're using for a radio is a Yaesu 817 QRP rig with five watts of power. And uh, they're they're handling uh, they're handling a pretty decent pileup with uh, with very modest equipment. So you don't need a lot of power in order to get into some of these satellites. Uh, so this is a recording of the K1ND expedition from 2015 using the FO29 sideband satellite. Zero one November. Zero one November. Zero one November. Kilo one November, Kilo one November, Kilo one November. Kilo one X ray, nine X ray. Now remember, Mike one Alpha. Now remember, Mike one Alpha five nine. So there's Kilo One November. Major D expedition. You know they worked uh, 29 QSOs on the FO29 satellite using pretty modest equipment, and it was the first time that Navassa Island had been on uh, satellites uh, since uh, I believe 1978. So uh, that was that was a big deal for the satellite operators to hear such a rare DXCC country on satellite. So there's uh, there are uh, it's not just working stations in the United States. You can work some DX on the satellites, too. All right. Very good. Well, we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to take your calls. And the Twitter universe is is the Twitter verse is, is going nuts over here. Uh, I'm not sure I can keep up with them, but uh, we'll, we'll take some of those tweets as well, but uh, get ready to give us a call here. And uh, in just a moment, we'll be back and take your calls with Sean Kutzko, KX nine X about satellites right here on ham talk live. This episode of ham talk live is brought to you in part by tower electronics. Tower Electronics has been the Ham's Dime Store since 1978. When you need connectors, mobile and handheld antennas, cables, or adapters, visit Scott or Jill at a Ham Fest near you. Or you can order online at pl-259.com or call 920-435-2973. Stock up on those supplies like PL-259 and end connectors, SMA adapters, audio cables, soldering supplies, mobile antennas, and ham sticks. Their silver-plated end connectors are even used on the International Space Station. Tower Electronics carries MFJ, Comet, Daiwa, OPEC, Workman, and HamPro products. And don't miss their 0% off sale going on now. Tower Electronics, online at pl-259.com. Proud to sponsor this episode of Ham Talk Live. Ham Talk Live with Neil Rapp. Hey baby, I'd love to be in your grid square. Join the conversation. Call us on voice with Skype at Ham Talk Live or give us a call at 812 Net Ham 1. That's 812 638 4261. Now, here's more Ham Talk Live. All right, welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Um, Tower Electronics is out on the road once again, and thanks to them for sponsoring the show. They're at Greenville, Tennessee. This weekend, coming up on uh, Saturday, actually. And then LaGrange, Georgia, the following Saturday, October 28th. And then November 3rd, 4th, and 5th, they'll be in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And so if you need some uh, some good connectors for your satellite work or whatever, give them a, a call or a visit if you uh, can't visit them. Uh, at one of those shows, give them a call at 920-435-2973. Or you can visit them at pl-259.com. Tell them you heard it on Ham Talk Live. And uh, we're going to take some calls here, assuming Murphy keeps staying away here. Uh, so if you have a question for Sean, now is the time to call. And let me give you that phone number. It's 812-NET-HAM-1. That's 812 638 42 
1061. Or you can Skype us. We're at Ham Talk Live on Skype, and we'll try to keep up with the Twitter verse at Ham Talk Live on Twitter as well. And 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 Sean, I, I've noticed that th- there's an awful lot of satellite people on Twitter, and 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 I, I always <laughs> I read all this stuff. And, and, and I keep seeing all this satellite stuff, and then I, I had a feeling, and this happened. As soon as I say, okay, we're going to do a show about satellites, it's like Twitter just blows up. Yep. <laughs> so what's up, with, what's up with that? Well, Twitter is a fantastic resource for uh, people who uh, chase uh, uh, satellite operators who transmit from multiple grid squares and it's a it's a great way to keep track of uh, um, the community of portable operators out there who enjoy transmitting from as many different grid squares as they possibly can um, just like um, HF operators uh, c- try to uh, talk to every state in the United States or try to get as many countries on HF as they can a lot of the satellite operators chase, Uh, the Maidenhead grid squares, and there are 488 grid squares in the continental United States. For those of you who don't know what a grid square is, they're uh, uh, geographic units. They're two degrees of longitude wide by one degree of latitude uh, tall or high, and uh, that is the, the geographic unit that is exchanged on the amateur radio VHF and UHF bands. And um, so there are a lot of people who try to communicate with as many different grid squares as they possibly can. It's kind of like electronic bingo, if you think about it. And uh, so there are um, uh, there are a, a whole crew of operators who enjoy taking their satellite gear portable and transmitting from as many of these different grid squares as possible because some of them, especially out west, are pretty rare. There aren't a whole lot of satellite operators in some of these grid squares. Uh, so uh, the people who try to collect as many as possible, they oftentimes need stations to go to these uh, uh, grid squares and put them on the air on the amateur radio satellites. So portable operating becomes very important, and Twitter becomes extremely important for keeping track of all of these people who go out into the field and activate uh, these rare grid squares. So you'll find a, a strong satellite uh, contingent on Twitter, and it's, a, it's, it's uh, the top way of keeping track of who is transmitting when in real time. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go to Twitter here and let's uh, plug the phone number again. It's eight one two six three eight four two six one eight one two net ham one. So, give us a call if you have a question or something to to chime in on uh, about satellites. We've got uh, about ten minutes here. We're at, we're going to be able to go a little bit longer since uh, we did get cut off uh, with the first attempt at the show. Uh, <laughs> So we've got about 12 minutes left, so uh, we'll uh, we'll be able to uh, get the full 45 in here at least uh, tonight. Um, so did did find that. So uh, give us a call 812-638-4261, 812-NET-HAM1. And while we're waiting on that, I will run over to the Twitterverse and see what we've got. I know um, Vance uh, had said earlier he wanted to know your opinion on uh, your aero antenna and and, uh, what you think of that compared to some of the others. So let's do that first while I read here. Okay. Um, so I am uh, I am one of the uh, satellite operators that uses an Aero antenna. Uh, Aero antenna is manufactured by a company, Aero Antennas, out of Wyoming. And uh, what an Aero antenna is is it's a short boom dual band Yagi, and it's got three elements on two meters and seven elements on seventy centimeters, and they're ninety degrees out of phase. So you can hold that antenna and point it at the satellite as uh, as it passes overhead, and it gives you um, significant gain on both of those bands. So uh, five watts from an HT uh, to a satellite that's passing overhead with no uh, obstructions in the way, uh, five watts is a lot of power. And uh, when you amplify it with the gain from an aero antenna, uh, you can do very, very well getting into the satellites with such a a small, uh, extremely portable station. Um, I prefer the aero antenna. There is another company uh, that manufactures uh, um, satellite antennas called Elk, and uh, they, they uh, instead of having a, a cross-boom Yagis, they use a log-periodic design. 
Uh, so, uh, so it, it's uh, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. There are there are some people who prefer the aero antennas. There are some people who prefer uh, the elk antennas. Uh, they're in they're in about the same price point. Uh, they're you know in the uh, under two hundred dollars certainly. Um, so both of those antennas work very well, and those are commercially available options. If uh, that's too much money for a person, or if they are just more uh, technically inclined and prefer to build stuff themselves, there are plenty of satellite uh, antenna plans that are available on uh, on the internet, especially on the uh, the AMSAT website. Again, that's uh, www.amsat a m s a t dot o r g. There's tons of information there. All right, and and right on cue, Jeff W E four B sends us a picture of a young lady with her arrow antenna. So we, we mm-hmm. just retweeted that. So Twitterverse, there you go. There's a a picture of the arrow antenna. And it's, it's always a nice little awesome. purple color. I like I like that. So yeah, give us a call. It's kind of funny. The, uh, yeah, go the ahead. color on your arrow. The, the color on your arrow antenna fades as you uh, go out into the field more and more. I've had mine for about five years, and it's it's not nearly as shiny as it was when I first bought it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would happen. That's that, that yeah. aren't ultraviolet. It just keeps uh, mm-hmm. keeps doing that. Well, eight one two six three eight four two six one is the phone number. Please give us a call and and chime in on the, on our first satellite show here tonight. And uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll get some more of these going on. And and speaking of of being outstanding in your field, I mean outstanding <laughs> in a field with your with your arrow. I know you wanted to to talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, portable operations and the D expeditions. I know a while ago you you kind of plugged that a little bit. There's was, was there anything else that you wanted to? Um, to mention about going out there and, and running the, uh, the portable stuff and, and the expeditions. Well, the only thing that I can really say is, is it's, it is so much fun to be able to transmit from, uh, multiple, uh, grid squares using really, really modest equipment. Just, you have to think about this in terms of scale, you know, uh, you're communicating, uh, with uh, a satellite that's flying overhead, and they're only—they're not transmitting with very much power. You're talking about anywhere from like 250 milliwatts to 500 milliwatts in most cases for these satellites. It's not very much power that these things are putting out because they've got a clear line of sight directly to uh, directly to the Earth. So. Um, Using uh, being able to receive a signal with that little power and transmitting with uh, no more than five watts uh, uh, opens up the the doors for extremely portable gear, and that means you can take it uh, easily on a business trip. You can take it easily on vacation with you. Um, the antenna that I use, the arrow antenna, uh, all of the elements uh, collapse uh, and break down. Uh, it, it's an antenna designed for portability. So you can collapse the entire antenna and put it in your carry-on bag and bring an HT with you. And uh, you can, you know, if you're going on vacation, you're on a business trip, anywhere you can take amateur radio with you and uh, and operate from any one of these uh, uh, grid squares uh, along your journey. I just spent um, about 10 days on the road in August uh, traveling uh, all around uh, a couple of the Great Lakes and, and uh, transmitted from 10 different grid squares uh, around Lake uh, Ontario and Lake Erie. And that was that was boatloads of fun. And uh, all I had with me were a couple of Yesu 817 QRP radios. I had a, a dual band HT and I had an aero antenna. And with that, I was able to transmit from 10 different grid squares and, uh, and uh, make uh, almost... Um, I think it was around 150, 175 satellite QSOs, uh, uh, just uh, in about 10 days' time. So it's 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 a hoot. Very good. Well, we've got a, we've got a couple of uh, other things here coming out there from the uh, from the Twitterverse. Uh, Glenn Miller AA5PK says you might mention uh, the output power of the satellites themselves. So so let's mm-hmm. kind of shift gears and let's 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 go. Uh, a few thousand miles up here and, and talk about what's up there. And, and I, I just, I'll, I'll say this and, 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 and leave it wherever, but in the hallway at, at, at ARL headquarters, I remember going down the hallway and I saw 
what it was Oscar one, I think it was. It was it was it was this first satellite, and I saw pictures of satellites on you know the cover of QST or, or you know CQ or something, and and the first time I saw that, I was just totally taken back uh, by you know all that went into to getting that thing going but the the size of it and and how it works and then i remember a few years ago at dayton uh i was i was on another show and um was waiting and and the guy from amsat was in front of me and and had a mock-up of the cubesat and i was just amazed that i could hold that thing in my hand so talk a little bit about the birds themselves well the you know the the satellites themselves uh, they're, they're, they're modern feats of engineering. I mean, these things have uh, transmitter receivers built into them. They transmit uh, telemetry and, uh, and data back down uh, to the Earth, and they're only using milliwatts of power in order to accomplish all of this. So, you know, the, the amount of technology that's packed into uh, a 10-centimeter cube is just staggering, and the engineers that design and, and build and, and get these satellites launched uh, deserve a real round of applause because they're uh, they're they're um, contributing to uh, the education community and uh, they're they're providing us with a, an incredible playground uh, above the earth that uh, that brings a lot of enjoyment to a lot of people so hats off to the engineers who design these satellites that uh, can communicate globally well uh, not quite globally but uh, a pretty far distance uh, with a, with just a, a 10 centimeter uh, cubes worth of uh, electronics and components and engineering. It's pretty remarkable. And and the power output would be typically uh, 250 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts. Uh, uh, a satellite with uh, with a watt of power these days is that's a, that's a lot of power. And yeah. and uh, uh, something else that's important to note too. And I've 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 talked about this a little bit, but the the amount of or you need to transmit and and communicate through a satellite. You don't need very much power. Five watts of power is plenty under under uh, all but the most extreme circumstances to be able to communicate through a satellite. In fact, if you transmit with more power than that, in um, in some cases, you can overload the satellite's receiver, which renders the satellite pass uh, inoperable for everybody who's trying to access it. And in some cases, you can actually cause uh, cause damage to the satellite itself. And uh, that would, uh, you know, we we don't uh, we don't want to knock any satellites off the air and render them inoperable for for anybody. So if you're getting interested in satellites, keep that power down. You know, five watts is plenty of power. All right, very good. And uh, Carl K eighty nine HQT says elk, 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 elk. There you go. So <laughs> it's, it's, it, you know, it's 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 like it's like the it's like the pizza debate. You know, some people yeah. like thin crust and some people like thick crust. But you know, the bottom line yeah. is, but both the arrow antennas and the elk antennas and and all of the designs that are available on the on the AMSAT website, all of those are very good antennas, and all of those will will get the job done. Yeah, and, and you've got some Arrow fans on the Twitterverse here. They're all saying Arrow, mm-hmm. Arrow, Arrow. So, yeah, just, and, hey, you know, re- Kenwood, Icom, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let's see if we've got anything else. We're just about out of time here. Uh, we've got two mm-hmm. minutes. So, yeah, actually, we better go ahead and, and stop. But, uh Thanks so much for coming on and doing this, and and wow, the the, the Twitter verse is is loving it. So uh, we'll uh, we'll have to get some more uh, satellite shows on. We'll mix those in, and and uh, thanks for coming on to get us started on everything, and uh, have fun out there on the satellites. Anything else we want to throw out here? Well, uh, the, I'd just like to, to strongly encourage anybody who's listening who's never tried satellite communications, it's not that hard, it's a ton of fun, and you've got a whole community worth of people uh, through AMSAT that are more than willing to share their time and expertise to help get you on the air. Again, here's a couple more, uh, a couple more plugs for their website, www.amsat.com. 
www.edgeofhope.org. Go to uh, the area on their website uh, called Education, and there's a whole bunch of information for uh, for newcomers to satellite operations to get you started. If anybody wants to uh, ask me any questions about satellite, just shoot me an email, kx9x at yahoo.com. I'll be happy to help you out in any way I can. The more the merrier when it comes to satellites. So anything we can do to help, let's uh, let's get you on the air. All right, there he is. It's Sean, KX9X, and that's a wrap for this week's Ham Talk Live. Uh, thanks to Sean and everybody out there in the Twitterverse for uh, chiming in, and we invite you back next Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Another familiar voice, Ward Silver, in 0 ax will be here, and he's going to talk about the new 2018 ARRL Handbook. And for a list of all of our upcoming guests, visit hamtalklive.com. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying 7375, and may the good DX be yours.